Well, you're pretty far back there. I'm pretty far. I can come up a little. Mm. Let's come closer. Closer. Mm. Song of the summer <laughs> closer. 2010. Unironically, I love that song. I don't know any of the lyrics except closer. <laughs> That's, I mean. It's like, I just can't stop. Does it say that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like, and I can away. That's like that's all I know. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good though. Like, I mean, it's good enough, right? Yeah, we'll go do it at karaoke. Okay, I'll, I'll do great. It'll be great. I'll get like a, you know how it like shows up on karaoke? You got a percentage. <laughs> You'll get a hundred percent. Get a hundred percent. Yeah. No, it'll be great. Oh it'll gosh. be perfect. <sighs> I just, hi everybody. I'm Kylie. <laughs> and I'm Eli. Apparently. <laughs> What what are we doing here today? Oh, uh, we're gonna talk about a book. Oh, wait, we've talked about a book before, haven't we? Mm-hmm. The one that we read. <laughs> uh, well, we talked Departures. about Departures. No, no, uh, uh, we talked about Disassembled. If... <laughs> just, yeah, just thinking of words that start with D. If cats disappeared from the world, yeah, that's the one. And, and disappeared. Um, confessions. Yeah, and confessions. That's right. Confessions was the one I was actually thinking of. I yeah. was close. Yeah, yeah, you were thinking of Confessions, the album by Usher, not <laughs> Closer by Neo. You, you get them confused. I do, yeah, I, right. quite, I, I very frequently get my American rappers confused. <laughs> um, Are they rappers? Are they American? <laughs> I think they're American. I just, um, oh, this is great. <laughs> I, I'd call them, I don't know, R&B? Okay. Singers? Yeah, I don't know why. Rappers, they don't, like... I guess I think of pop and rap mm-hmm. as, like, married to each other. Because of the, like, ubiquity of yeah, rap. Yeah. Because rap is basically what rock was, like, 40 years ago. Yeah, pretty where much. everybody in every country does it. It's just the default at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> we're talking about My World by Justin Bieber. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. <laughs> This has suddenly become a music podcast. (laughs) Not even on purpose. No, no. Welcome to our podcast. um, Cinema musical. (laughs) And today we're talking about a book, apparently. I I can't. (laughs) What's the Japanese word for music? I keep thinking ega, and I'm like, it's not ega. Ongaku? Ongaku. There it is. Yeah. Ega. (laughs) It's a movie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) We're talking about the most musical of art forms, the book, the written word. I'm gonna choke on the lozenge. Mm. So we we just got, we just finished watching a whole bunch of uh, meme house. Yes. And we're both like super phlegmy from laughing so hard, so we're both eating mm-hmm. a lozenge Hi- so that we can speak clearly. Highly recommend the highest form of cinema <laughs> <laughs> for anybody who like us. Uh, hasn't caught up until now, you know, three years later. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so what is this book? The book that we're talking about is called The Reason I Jump, One Boy's Voice from the Silence of Autism. Mm-hmm. So this is a book by, well, we'll get into that, but it's by a Japanese person by the name of um, Naoki Higashida, mm-hmm. um, who is a nonverbal autistic person from Japan. Now, the book was first published in Japan in 2007, and then it was translated, I think, by Higashida's mom, mm-hmm. as well as um, Keiko Yoshida and her husband, who's the author, mm-hmm. David Mitchell. Do you know Why him? do I know that name? Because he wrote Cloud Atlas. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Like, David Mitchell was like, oh, I want to make this thing a thing in English. So, basically, right. the book was published in 2007, mm-hmm. but it, and it was, like, really popular in Japan, but mm-hmm. it didn't get, like, big until 2013 when it was published. The translation was published. I see. And that's, it's been translated in, like, a whole bunch of different languages. That's a while. Yeah, it took a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. I'm still recovering. <laughs> um, now, there's controversy about the book. Oh, um, and it's, it alleges that its author, Higashida, mm-hmm. 
learn to communicate using the scientifically discredited technique of facilitated communication. Mm-hmm. And many dismiss the claims that he actually wrote the book himself. Oh. So it's like a like hot topic, like mm. whether or not he actually wrote it. And I mean, <clears throat> in autistic spaces, mm-hmm. like there's definitely discussion about like authenticity, you know, and mm-hmm. and about writers, you know, a, a lot of it's really strange. A lot of material that is like the voice of autism right. is written by parents of autistic children. Oh. A lot of material. <clears throat> right. So it comes through like a, a, that filter of, they don't actually know what it's like, but they know their reaction to yes, their e- kids being autistic. Exactly. And okay. Okay. so that's like a lot of the criticism based around the book is that, you know, he didn't really write it Mm -hmm. like that there claims that he didn't really write it and that you know it's written by his mom Mm -hmm. you know so take that as you will for me i don't feel like it's really important to this discussion because okay i think this book is good as a jumping off point Mm -hmm. for people who want to like learn more about autism and like the voice of autism and things like that i have other recommendations of okay. other books that I can that I've read and a couple that I haven't read, so we'll get to that later. But I think this book is uh, I read the book, you didn't, um, so you can't speak for what you thought of it. But. No, this is like this is like the episode about Tezuka where I kind of have no idea going into this other than like the very vague outline of what this book was about. Mm-hmm. And you're pretty much like you did all the research and everything. Yeah. Now I will say I read this book uh, like six weeks ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I read a lot. Yeah. Um. So it's a little bit a little bit foggy. I did like skim back through it before we mm-hmm. um started this it's today. So it's like it's slowly a little fresh in my mind. Right. But you have. Read... <laughs> oh no! I have hiccups. Oh no! <laughs> but you have read several hundred books since you read this one. <laughs> I mean, am I wrong? No. <laughs> not it's more like 77 <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's a little more reasonable no i'm kidding but um but yeah so my initial impression i think i gave this book like a three out of five not that like that really matters mm-hmm. but like i my biggest problem well let me go let me let me reel it back for a moment okay let me say number one the very first thing that i thought when when i started reading this book was and i think this Every time we watch a movie and every time we consume anything that is not natively in English, mm-hmm. that it has to be passed through the filter of translation. And we've yeah. talked about this plenty of times oh, on the yeah, show. Oh, yeah, definitely. That there are always going to be errors in translation. Mm-hmm. There are always going to be nuances mm-hmm. that you cannot replicate. Yeah. I mean, I think we've talked about the the situation in which we were at the movie yeah, and they used the word catchy, mm-hmm. which is like stingy, stingy, but yeah. it like, it has like this, like kind of like, kind of like bitchy attitude to it. Kind of. Like, yeah. and it was so funny because like we heard, we heard it and we knew it because mm-hmm. we were learning Japanese. Mm-hmm. So we laughed and no one else in the theater laughed because right. the way they translated it on the subtitles mm-hmm. was like, you're mean or so- I don't even something remember. really plain. Yeah. Like it was that. really plain. Yeah. And, and so it can be hard to convey that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So that was like very first thing that I thought mm-hmm. when starting this book. Um, and and the very the very f- intro of the book is by David mm-hmm. Mitchell. Ah. Um, and it and just, it's all, you know, not linear. There's like seven different sections to the intro. <laughs> They're all from different and perspectives. I, like, the intro is actually like every five pages in the book. Yeah. You, you get one paragraph of the intro, yeah. but it's in reverse and in, in reverse chronological order. Yeah. Yeah. So. But no, I'm sorry. So you were saying about the, the intro. So yeah, that was like the very first thing that I was like, okay, everything that's said here with him, take mm-hmm. it with a grain of salt, mm-hmm. which like, I mean, if you're coming at it from the perspective of this person didn't even write it at all, um, then obviously take it with an even bigger grain of salt, you know, mm-hmm. however you want to interpret it. Um, I've, I was like on the, um, autism side of Reddit and they were, there was discussion about whether or not there's like 
Like, about authenticity, you know, mm-hmm. whether or not, like, he wrote it and things right. like that. Because it was supposed to be that he wrote it when he was 13. Mm-hmm. And I think he's, like, he's probably 30 now. I'm mm-hmm. not 100% sure. I feel like he was born in 92. Okay, yeah. So, I, I don't quite remember, so don't quote me on that. But supposedly he wrote it when he was 13. Right. So, anyway, um, basically, the, there, there, there are people who are, like, very strongly on the side of, like, this is pseudoscience, the... Mm-hmm. Uh, facilitated communication is pseudoscience like you can't um you can't trust anything it was definitely his mom like he didn't do anything and then there are other people who are like well yeah but you're like infantilizing Mm -hmm. that anybody who's nonverbal, you know a a nonverbal autistic you know isn't like able to do that kind of stuff and like that's also inaccurate so like it's like there's it's really like there are like uh, there's argument there yeah um so again, like take it how you will, believe what you want to believe. Mm-hmm. Um, because I definitely saw another person who uh, was autistic, who was like, "Yeah, but a lot of the studies uh, invalidating facilitative communication discuss how they they were discussing how they're all like led by neurotypical people, right? So like, there's already an inherent bias in the study. So yeah. I don't know, like take it how you will." <clears throat> Of course. Read into it however you want. At the end of the day, the book basically is 58 questions that um, Naoki then answers. Okay, yeah. Um, So, like, um, why don't you make eye contact? And, Mm -hmm. like, why do you talk funny? Mm -hmm. You know, which, like, upon rereading it, under the, like, knowing about the whole, like, it might have been his mom. Yeah, but also, like, he's nonverbal. <laughs> yeah. So, like, why do you talk funny? It was like, but that's kind of a strange question. Doesn't talk at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for him to answer. Yeah. So, like, upon rereading it, I was a, a little bit more reflective mm-hmm. about the, some of the questions that were posited. And mm-hmm. I was like, hmm, this is fascinating. Now, I'll say, I do think it's a good, like I said, jumping off point, right. LOL pun, you know. <laughs> To learning and understanding the voice of autistic people. Right. Um, I think it helps you. It like, I think the questions are good. Like, they can give you a guide for, like, discussions that you could have with, you know, an autistic friend or mm-hmm. a, a relative or, you know, something like that. You like, know, and Like, if you've never been exposed to something like this before. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, I think it, it's, like I said, it's a good jumping off point. Mm-hmm. But I think... What's really important to remember, and, like, this is always discussed in autistic circles, is that when you've met one autistic person, Mm -hmm. you've met one autistic person. What? People are different? It's like, wow, amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Like, every autistic autistic person is completely different Mm -hmm. from every other autistic person. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, there are similar traits shared, you know, and, like, the reason people are, like, able to have a diagnosis is because there are, like, similarities about how certain things happened in mm-hmm. development, childhood, and, like, into adulthood, depending on, you know, when you're diagnosed. Yeah. But <laughs> ultimately, like, everyone's different. It's, it's just, like, regular folks. Re- regular folks. Yeah, it's just, yeah. like, everybody. Neurotypical people. Yeah. Like, they're all still individuals. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's really important, because that was another thing about the book that I found... I, 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 how do I put this Mm off-putting for me Mm -hmm. because it was like, it seemed to be saying like some of the answers were like, well, all autistic people don't do this because, or like all autistic people, I I don't even try to think of an example. Like, um, was it like sensory stuff or like, uh, there was like, uh, there was like a discussion about how. Why do autistic people like water and like how it's because they want to like return to the origin of times before and things like that. And it was That's like oddly specific. <laughs> it's like I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Which actually talking about that, mm-hmm. some some folks think that that particular discussion mm-hmm. I don't remember like exactly how it all coalesced because I was like, I don't feel like reading about this, honestly. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I I just didn't want to. Right. It was like about, like, anti-vaxxing and stuff like that, which is, like, Ooh. yeah, big game. And also, okay, I will say, like, mm-hmm. I 
I don't, I didn't watch any interviews on this or anything like that. I didn't do like a whole lot of research, but like David Mitchell did definitely do, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. David Mitchell did definitely do uh, interviews with Autism Speaks. And that's just like, oh no, that's a big yikes. That's, that's a big I yikes. That. I hate that. Yeah. So, so anyway. I, um, can, can we just, can we just take a moment to say like as, as a PSA for anybody who is not who might not be in the know, if you're ever looking up anything about autism in any capacity, one of the top results is going to be Autism Speaks for, like, anything that you search. No. Do don't, not. Don't. Do not engage. <laughs> Just blacklist. Just look up why you should not engage with them. and Because that is, that is a whole can of worms. Yeah. But... That is definitely not the first time. It's like the whole thing with, with Sia and that movie that she made where she was working with Autism Speaks for a while because nobody told her you should not work with this organization. Mm -hmm. So, like, that happens frequently, I feel like. Yeah. And just don't. Just don't. Just don't engage. D-O-N-T. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I thought this would be an appropriate book for the show because I think, you know, it's, it's by... Uh, an, a Japanese author, you mm -hmm. know, whether or not you want to believe it was him or his mom, it's still a Japanese author. Right. Mm -hmm. It was translated, you know, into English. And I think that's a really interesting discussion in and of itself. I felt like I was reading while I was reading it. Mm -hmm. There were parts where I was like, this is like, you know how, like when you're reading something, you can tell it's translated. Yes. I could, like I had that. Yeah. Those moments where it was just like, this is not quite like right right yeah it's not it's not quite like flow fluid. Yeah, yeah fluid yeah, yeah. yeah totally um okay so i'll there were a couple of questions that i can um give you that were in the book okay. um i i will say oh i'll go back to that actually um so one of them was why do you ignore us when you're the question posited to naoki mm -hmm. um was why do you ignore us when we're talking to you? Mm -hmm. And the one the answer for that one was um, I have to find it. You got this. Oh, I believe in you. Even when someone's right here in front of me, I still don't notice when they're talking to me. Not noticing, however, is not the same as deliberately ignoring. Yeah. And so, like there were there were parts in the book like that that felt very poignant. Mm -hmm. That it's like. That is absolutely something that I think can be applied to a lot of experience yeah. of neurodivergent folks in general. Right. Like, not just autistic people. Right. <clears throat> so I thought that was, like, I, I, I wanted to include that to be, like, even though there's, like, some odd flowery stuff, mm -hmm. like the whole... Um, returning to the origin. <laughs> returning to the origin. <laughs> return to Monk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't we all just want to return to Monk, uh -huh. though? Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. There were some, there were some good like zingers mm -hmm. throughout the book that I that I think could be relatable. Right, even if the whole book isn't necessarily like bulletproof or whatever, there are definitely certain parts that, if somebody's never been exposed to that idea before, and they have that question of like, why doesn't somebody make eye contact or why why are they just ignoring me when I try to talk to them? Yes. It's it's a succinct answer that could make somebody maybe like change their perspective or yeah. or, th or think differently about yes. the perspective. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> um the in the book too, so there's there are the fifty eight questions, but there are also little like short stories mm -hmm. throughout as well. And I think I think they're all written by him. Mm -hmm. Well, supposedly. Are they like like about him or like fiction? Like fiction. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. like almost like poetry prose kind of yeah those cool. are cute too actually one of them the last one in it really like stuck with me and mm -hmm. like i kept thinking about it like i i still think about it oh, like yeah. even now i actually yeah i will admit i was thinking about it we were like on a car ride and mm -hmm. i was thinking about it and i was like where did i read that <laughs> like, i couldn't remember because it was like it wasn't like part like the the main focus of the book were the questions. Right, so like of I kind of forgot that the, there were short stories in it. Yeah. But there are. And some of them are really cute. Um, the last one maybe isn't cute. It was I don't know, like I would describe it as rough, but I think other people really liked it. So mm -hmm. the book had like 
critical acclaim. Yeah. Like, people really, really liked the book. Yeah. But then the controversy was kind of like, should we like the book? Right, like, right. you know. Um, and then, of course, the question, what's the reason you jump? Um, which I'm curious, like, how do you interpret that question? Like, why do you stim? Okay, yeah, yeah. Is that... Is that... Yeah. Well, because I wasn't sure if you would, like, take it literally or figuratively. Right, um, right. But they put, people with autism react physically to feelings of happiness and sadness. So when something happens that affects me emotionally, my body seizes up as if struck by lightning. Mm. Seizing up doesn't mean that my muscles literally get stiff and immobile. Rather, it means that I'm not free to move the way I want. So by jumping up and down, it's as if I'm shaking loose the ropes that are tying up my body. Mm. I liked that. Yeah. I thought that was a, like, good, like, visualization for explaining that. It's kind of poetic without (laughs) returning to the origin. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Without fully. (laughs) We don't have to return to origin. Um, (laughs) And then I will say, like, I I was really trying to find, like, discussion by autistic folks Mm -hmm. about this book. And I could not find a lot. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I couldn't on Reddit anyway. I was looking on Reddit. Though I did see some of them say that they really liked the description in the book of, like, what it's like mm-hmm. to be autistic. And I'll read it. I'll, I'll, I'll read just a small part of it because it's really, really long. Okay. Um, and it's, now your mind is a room where 20 radios, all tuned to different stations, are blaring out voices and music. The radios have no off switches or volume controls. The room you're in has no door or window. And relief will only come when you're too exhausted to stay awake. Hmm. So, there's a lot more. There's a yeah, whole lot right, more to right. that. And that, um, I, there was discussion about how, like, that feels like a, like when you're, like, reaching, like, a meltdown point. Right. Which, um... If you don't know anything about autism, meltdown is like basically how do I put it? Like I don't know the actual definition of it, but it's like when overstimulation reaches a point of like boiling over. Yeah. And you like you can't stop you from like having an emotional outburst basically. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um and you can you can you can also do a shutdown too. But anyway, mm-hmm. anyway, people talking about how that's like that's like a way to describe being overstimulated. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I thought was so interesting about that was that that particular passage was from David Mitchell's oh. introduction. Huh. So like the part that like was really being like like resonated with people. Yeah, yeah. was like not by an autistic person. Huh. So. Well, is he? I don't think so. Is that I? Because I was gonna ask, is that why? Is that part of why he was so interested in? I don't. I'll look it up. I, yeah. Well, and I mean, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. Real. Yeah. Real so I. I didn't want to say. I didn't want to say it until I was sure. Mm-hmm. His son is autistic. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. That's so why. That's he exactly wanted... what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. With the parent. He. That's yeah. why he wanted to read the book. That's why right. he wanted it translated because right. he wanted access to. Hmm. So I mean, yeah. there's. Yeah. There's like. Kind and loving passion behind the reason this book yeah intention behind the reason this book exists yeah for sure so interpret that how you will Mm -hmm. i think it's a really good jumping off point yeah like if some if this is something that you're interested in um if you want to learn about it i think this is a really good starting point i think it's a it's really important to remember when you met one autistic person you've met one Mm -hmm. autistic person Mm -hmm. and i think it's really important to remember that this is like not non-fiction per se like yeah. it, it is what it isn't it's very biased mm-hmm. and like there's a lot of humanity in this mm-hmm. so like it's not going to apply to everybody you right. know and um you know something that bothers one autistic person might not bother another autistic person and things mm-hmm. like that so like take it all with a grain of salt but like take it all with like a sense of wonder and wanting to learn more yeah like yeah and on that note i can actually give you I think that's how you should just approach life in general. Just yeah. to stop PSA number two. All right. I'm talking to you. You you know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you. Stop being a cynical asshole and uh, live life with a sense of wonderment and wanting to learn more. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's it. The one thing I forgot to mention with translation yeah. was I, I can't, I don't think I said it, but 
thinking about the translation, of course, like between different languages, you're going to lose nuance. But also, yeah. if we're assuming that he wrote the book, mm-hmm. then the people who are translating it or bringing it to light um, are all three non-autistic adults. Yeah, yeah. And so that's something to remember, too. Like, yeah. the, inherently, this is just not the it, voice of an autistic person. Right, whether or not the original text is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Which, actually, okay, can I hot, hot take for a second here? Mm-hmm. People get really upset. Um, I've seen it a lot in the time that we've been running this channel, especially with anime. People get really upset when translators add... Um, slang that is like current in like american vernacular uh because they're like oh it's you know it's like dating the anime or whatever just and 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 the thing the the proposition that i usually see um given when people are upset about a like mistranslation like that is they say just translate it literally just do it like it was written you can't literally hot, translate. <laughs> hot take. Those people don't understand how translation works. No. Um, or Japanese. Japanese because... is like literally the complete reverse of English. Yeah. Like, and... it, like I, I don't know how to explain it. In, like if you don't know Japanese. Yeah. But it's like... It, it's completely opposite. It, yeah, not and like, not not just like sentence structure and stuff, but in terms of like what is said versus not said, because English is a very literal language. We we like to say a lot of words to say a few number of things, but Japanese says a very few number of words to say a lot of things. Yeah, and it's very context dependent and yes. tone dependent. Yes, like like that situation in the movie. Don't remember which one. Exactly, where the police officer is like student. Yeah, 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 and that's literally and all that he says. That's literally all he says. But the translation was something like, "What are you doing not at school?" Yeah, or yeah, yeah, something exactly, like that. Exactly. So, like, yell at me in the comments if you want. Like, that's just that's just my opinion. You know, I, talk about it, debate, argue, whatever. But my hot take is that people who ask for things to be translated literally don't fully understand the implication of what they're asking for because. I don't think it's possible. No, there are... No. There, because there are some things in Japanese that, like... I'm trying to think of, like, something specific that, like, you don't say in English. Because there's mm-hmm. just... It's not, like... Like, the, the the blue face. Remember when we were having that discussion mm-hmm. in class? And we, like, it was, like, a 20-hour... Or a 20-minute discussion <laughs> right. about, like, blue face. Yeah, Or something yeah. like that. I think it was blue. Yeah. Yeah. And it was and like, I, ca- I can't just, remember what it meant. I don't, it's been a couple years, so right. I don't remember, but it was like, we were all like, is we this person all, like, losing oxygen? Are they yeah, dying? We, yeah. We, we and thought like, like they were like, they couldn't breathe. Uh, and it what was, was it? It was like embarrassment or sadness or something. Something. Yeah. And it was like, that just doesn't, I mean, you can go one step, you can translate the the implication but you can't translate the original word or the the original phrase or it just won't make sense without a translator's exactly note. like so. there are there are idioms yeah in other languages i mean like, there's idioms you, in english like, if you, that if you sense. tried to literally translate put your nose to the grindstone mm-hmm. like if you that just it's hilarious that we're talking about literal translations yeah. in a discussion about autism, about autism. it's yeah. so funny i I, I didn't mean to completely derail. I just I, I just wanted to say that because, like, I think that that's really important. Like, you're saying that whether or not the original text was written by him, by the time that you get it to be translated, it is no longer his original words. I, like, I mean, yeah, it, it it's not him anymore. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really important to remember that. And to remember that always when you're in consuming media yeah. that's not in the original language. Like, you are going to lose something from mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing or anything. I'm not no, I'm not trying to no. put any morality on it. I'm just saying it is a fact that it will not be the same. Right. It will in some way be different. Mm-hmm. Like a VHS copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um so here are some books that um that I've read. Okay. Um Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. Um the Readers describe the main character as autistic. Mm-hmm. Um, An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. The main character is autistic. 
And then uh, City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders is by a neurodivergent author. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested, these are all um, fiction. Um, but if you're interested in something like that, um, I've read all of them. I enjoyed them. I mean, some I enjoyed more than others, but I enjoyed mm -hmm. them. But you'd recommend all of them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're looking for if you're looking for autistic representation in in um, fiction, mm -hmm. um, then go for that. Yeah. Um, and then I haven't read these, but I saw these recommended by other people. Mm -hmm. There's, I think these are all nonfiction. Okay. There's Look Me in the Eye by John Elder Robinson. Um, this one, I, I'm not going to say the author's full name because I don't know how to pronounce it and I don't want to be rude. Mm -hmm. It's um, How Can I Talk If My Lips Don't Move by mm -hmm. Tito. And I'm just going to say M, um, but I'm sure you can find them. Mm -hmm. um, this person was also nonverbal. Oh, okay. So that could okay. be like a good... Like counterpoint? Or, yeah. Or companion yeah, yeah. So that could be good and then nobody nowhere by donna williams um are the suggestions that i found that are nonfiction um by autistic authors in their voice and not some like oh is it yeah. is it good is it not good right, you know, right. Like, stuff like that so yeah. yeah like uh what was the other one well, huh? the, uh, the the curious case of the dog in the nighttime or whatever. Oh my gosh! As yeah. another example of so, is it good? Is it not good? Yeah, the curious case in the dog in the nighttime is like touted as like it's it's usually read in schools in mm -hmm. America. I read least. it in school. Um, and it's like touted as like the book to understand autism, and it's like the guy who wrote it. Oh, what's his name? I can't remember. It doesn't matter right now, but uh, Mark. I feel like author but... Mark Authorman. I don't remember, truly. I don't. But so. John, he, John Book. He he was like, <laughs> John Book. He was very, <laughs> very, like, adamant about how the character in that book is not autistic. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, no, like, he's not autistic. I didn't write him that way. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's funny because, like, the whole book, like, the, there's, like, discussion about, like, special needs. And, right. like, that he, like, goes to a specific school mm -hmm. because of the of his learning and everything. Mm -hmm. But the author is like, no, absolutely not. Right. But everybody like touts it as like the book about autism. Mm -hmm. But then people who are autistic are, are like, yeah, I don't know about this book because like <laughs> it definitely carries on some stereotypes that yeah. aren't very healthy. So no, no it's a little sussy, but it's interesting. I mean, I th but I think it's like you read this kind of stuff and then like you process it and you look it up and you research it mm -hmm. and you specifically look up the voices of the people who are, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that, that is, mm -hmm. you know, and see how they interpret it too, yeah. you know, cause so then you can learn. No, this, this show has nothing to do with critical thinking or proper representation of marginalized groups at all. No, we, we just pee pee poo poo. Yeah. No, we just watch things and say, yeah, good. Or, yeah, good. Yeah, no good. <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> No. Uh, so what do we say about this book? <laughs> I I didn't read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we have introduced the dynamic third category. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, is that is that all the? That's all I had to say about that's that. That's all you have. Okay. Mm -hmm. So join us next week when we will be talking about the earth shattering, career changing album. Uh, rapper Turnt Senga by T Pain, where we will be continuing, where he was a rapper, and then he transitioned into being an R and B singer with auto tune. Uh, <laughs> I will say there, this has been made into a movie. Oh yeah. Um, we might watch it. We're talking about T Pain still, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Of course, I wouldn't talk about anything else on this show. Right, right. So um, yeah, if uh. If, if it is easily available to us. Yeah, we'll we might watch probably... it. Probably. Let us know. Let us know yeah. if you want us to watch what it. What do you think? What, what we think of it. We'll analyze it. All right. It's good. Then join us next week to learn all about T-Pain. Yeah. That's the welcome back to the T-Pain podcast. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, we are also on Spotify, so you can follow us there. Uh, if you don't have YouTube Premium and you want to turn your goddamn phone screen off while you're listening... Uh, that's great for that. Uh, you could also just download <laughs> Firefox and turn on desktop mode. 
that's I mean, another option. Okay, look, I'm trying to get our Spotify numbers up, so I'd really <laughs> appreciate it if you wouldn't undermine that. <laughs> I'm just trying to help people. <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, you can also get the Brave Browser with. Uh, <laughs> Hashtag not uh, sponsored. No, not not sponsored at all. Um, and Just end the podcast. If you're on Spotify, I had to say the second half. If you're on Spotify, we also have a YouTube channel. Got a bunch of old video essays, and you can listen to this and watch a cool little visualizer go boop, 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 whenever we talk. I love the boop, 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 boop. I do too. Yeah. It's good. Look, we can, wait, I'm not going to make it do it. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>